I always insist that anyone that claims a miracle sees a doctor, because every miracle that's true stands up to medical scrutiny. I tell people, get it checked out, go and see a doctor. We have four doctors in the church who also check up, and we go to the GPs to make sure that what people claim is really true. And it was so bad. There, there were times when, I, you know, to change, I couldn't lift my hands up like that. But certain housework, like cooking, stretching up in the cupboards and things like that. It was, it was difficult for me, you know. And um, no, there, something said to me, you know, you fool. You've got the penile newspaper, the trumpet call. So I got up. When, when I went down for healing, I thought something fantastic was going to happen. But I could feel, you know, as days goes by, I felt my back was getting better. But the third time, the third Sunday we went back to the church, um, my back was completely healed. I just couldn't feel any pain anymore until, well, up to now, there is nothing. And I think it's just, it's just so wonderful what Jesus has done for me. I was driving back through the country lanes. As I turned into this particular lane, I thought to myself, oh goodness, there's a few idiots about today, so I'd better take it a little bit easy. And a few minutes later, I found out that was quite a good thing to do. As I was turning round the bend, keeping very close into the left-hand side, um, this van just came out of nowhere. And the next thing I knew, I was having a collar put on my neck. He thought I'd broken the actual collarbone because of the way he was moving my arms and everything. Uh, felt it, everything was crunching. I could hear all these noises going on inside. And I wondered what on earth had gone on inside. She came to me with what I consider to be a severe whiplash injury, one of the worst kind that I'd seen. Um, she had severe pain in the neck, extending down one arm. Um, she also had what is called paresthesia, that's loss of normal sensation and pins and needles feeling in that arm. Come on, Michael came over and he said, you know, start you moving your head from side to side. Anyway, it was time for us all to go home and as we were going home, I could just feel the pain and all the tightness and everything just being released completely off of my shoe. It was just going. It was just so incredible. It's just disappearing. And I couldn't believe it. By the time I got indoors, I said to my friend Dion, I said, it's gone. It's gone. I'm actually healed. I'm actually better. And although you know God can do it, although you believe it, when it really does happen, it's amazing. It's so, so incredible. Okay, I'm going to feed the dogs and I'll come back for breakfast in a minute and do the station, okay? Bye. And Carol and I went on an evening. It was in June. It was a lovely meeting. There was a lot of miracles happening and the praise was beautiful and uh, I just really felt that God was there. And uh, We were just stood in, in, in the crowd there when they were praising. So I have a, a reflux problem in my stomach which allows the acid to come back into the gullet and it's been with me for about ooh, 10 years and I couldn't eat certain foods and I had to take tablets all the time to keep the acidity down in the stomach. And that just went. And I phoned, I think I phoned Mairdry and I said, or Rob, I can't, probably Rob, and said, I can't believe this is gone. I have, I have no pain and I haven't taken any tablets. And of course what I'd experienced was a miracle that happened in the church and I wasn't really even aware of it. And I hadn't been prayed for, I was at the back of the church. My healing uh, was a year and a half, year and three quarters ago. I've had no recurrence and no problems. I can eat anything I like now, um, and there's not really been any problem, which is, in fact, in itself, quite a, a, a miracle that I can just relax when I'm eating. I don't have to worry about what I'm eating or what I'm drinking. It seems to be perfectly okay. Rob Whitaker went and had an X-ray, and they told him he'd got a blockage in his kidney and a growth. It looked a critical disease until Jesus stepped in.